Hi, thanks for tuning in. Did you ever notice that there are two trees in the Garden of Eden? It's true. There's the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, Adam and Eve were told that they could not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but they didn't have that restriction, uh, at least that we know of, regarding the tree of life. In fact, they might have eaten from the tree of life. We aren't given a record of that. For a moment, let's just assume that man, that Adam and Eve, did eat from the tree of life while they were in the Garden of Eden. While they did that, they were in harmony with God. They had not yet sinned. And so what would that mean if they ate from the tree of life while they were in harmony with God? I'm assuming that it would mean that as long as they were in harmony, they would be able to continue eating from the tree of life and just live with God forever. But they didn't have that opportunity because they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And because they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, God cursed the ground, he uh, cursed the serpent, he did several things, but one of the things that he did was he said that mankind needs to leave the Garden of Eden. Let's look at that in Scripture. Let's go to Genesis 3, towards the end of the chapter. It says, And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, in verse 22, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So, verse 23, the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. So it looks like God wanted to protect Adam and Eve. He wanted to protect mankind from eating of this tree of life while they were in a position where they were separated from God, where they no longer had that perfect relationship with God. You know, Isaiah 59 2 talks about that. So if we go to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2, it says, But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you. Our iniquities, our sins, separate us from God. And so I think God really did us a favor. We were separated from God, and rather than let us eat from the tree of life and live forever separated from God, he removed us from the garden. Isn't that amazing? God, rather than uh, put us in that situation, he removed the tree of life from us before we could eat it and put us in a permanent state of separation from him. In doing so, Yahweh preserved the chance for us to access the tree of life in the future um, when, when our relationship to him had been perfected after it had been restored. Actually, God talks about that in the book of Revelation. Let's look at that. Revelation 2, verse 7. Revelation 2, verse 7 says this. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. So basically what this is saying is that as we go through our lives and our lives will eventually end, if we are victorious and we're victorious through Christ, we will have the right to eat from the tree of life. That's fantastic. That's wonderful news that after we've been victorious, we have access to the tree of life and can live forever in that state. But that's not the only time Revelation talks about the tree of life. Here it is at the beginning of the book, but it's at the end of the book as well. Revelation 22, verse 14 says this. 
22, verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to eat of the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. The city that he's talking about is the city where we will live forever. It's the eternal city, the city where we will live with God in a perfect state. And that's a really grand statement, isn't it? The tree of life whose fruit will give us eternal life is reserved for those entering the gates of heaven. Now, how long is heaven going to last? I guess it's going to last as long as the tree of life is there. I don't know. But what the Bible does is really interesting regarding the tree of life. The tree of life bookends the Bible. Here it is at the very beginning of the book in Genesis, and it's right at the last of the last book, Revelation. So we don't need to concern ourselves just because we've never seen the tree of life in person. And there's a reason why we don't have to, to really worry about that at all. There's this guy that I really like. His name is Shane Wood, Dr. Shane Wood. He's from Ozark Christian College. I've already talked about Ozark Christian College. That's where uh, Mark Moore was a professor. Shane Wood is also a professor there. And he wrote this book called Between Two Trees, which is a great title for a book. And he's talking about the tree of life. And in between these two trees, he points out that there is another tree in the Bible right in the middle. This tree of life is on one end of the Bible to the far um, beginning and at the other end of the Bible to the far end. But this other tree that's right in the middle, it's a little bit different than the tree of life. While, while the tree of life brings blessings, this other tree was cursed. While the tree of life is beautiful, this other tree, well, it's, it's ugly. While the tree of life is luscious and green, this other tree is barren and rugged. While one tree had something hanging from it that would give eternal life, that would represent life, the other tree had something hanging from it that also gave eternal life, but it represented death. While one brought us beauty, because we were sinless, the other tree brought us grace because we were sinners. The other tree in the Bible, of course, is the cross. Yes, we, we would do well to remember that for those who hung on this tree with nails, the cross appears to be an instrument that results in it being called the tree of death, right? It's the opposite of the tree of life. But there was this one time, there was this one time when someone was hung on that tree of death, when they were crucified on it, when they were tortured to death on it, when they had a spear put through their side while they were on it when they were taken down from that tree of death and they were put in a tomb, but they didn't stay dead. There was this one time that a person was tortured to death on the cross and it was actually a sacrifice, a sacrifice for the sins of the world. There was this one time when a man who died for all of humanity turned the tree of death into the tree of life for you and me. Who was that one who offered himself so that he could die on a cross to give us life? Well, you know who it is. It's the reason I'm making this whole series of lessons. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this short little lesson today. If you did, 
give it a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. I would really like it if you subscribe and leave a comment. Ring the bell if you'd like to be notified of future videos. 